when I tried to run the show my way, I just run it right into a ditch. Yeah. You know, when I tried to, because I was self-seeking, I was manipulative. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of these characteristics, but that was the truth. Mm -hmm. If I saw somebody that was hanging around a, a bunch of cute ladies that had money, I wanted to be that guy's friend. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the guy. I didn't care about him, but that's an ulterior motive that yeah, I'm right. not, I don't do that today. I don't look at somebody and say, well, they got a deep pocketbook. I want to be their friend. <laughs> No. I was giving Don a hard time because I, I said I guess every guest just automatically takes my seat. I don't know why nobody wants Michael's seat. That's like the best angle. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. No, it's not. What? What? That's that is the saying. best angle. That's what I'm saying. Like uh, the last time when we had your your boy here, I literally got a. So if I don't look at one? you as much, Don, no, that's I, because I got a. I had a neck twitch. I brought all the guests. Which one? <laughs> Mario. <laughs> Mario. I wasn't even here for that. <laughs> I, I keep oh, on. <laughs> that was the best one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely waiting for that to come out because that's getting two thumbs down from me on YouTube. Uh, Trent, what's his name? Uh, wow. Tr you who? didn't even know a guest on our show's name. It's with a T. His Tr name is Archibald. Archibald. It's low. No. Low no, T. No, I really did forget his name. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, at least he didn't. At least you didn't go through the the whole. His name was D's. No, it was uh. No, D's. I really. <laughs> what? D's. What's your last name? D's. <laughs> his first name was D's. And I really did forget D's his name. Tr uh, Tr Tristan. Tristan. I got memories, but yeah, the whole time I was listening to Tristan talk, I was like this. And then when I left, I could not even move my neck. You got the old people. Also, they got the older guys <laughs> over here. They got us, the 40 and above over here. The we're, young we're, kids are over there. Yeah, because the they, they have the better camera angle. They have the better lighting. The camera on us, when you look at it on YouTube, we're going to look about 50 years older. And they're going to look like they're 12. You're 50 You're years older than us. Yep. Yeah. I think they, they're setting us up that way, man. Oh, yeah, because Mario, Mario looked like a whole different. 20 pounds. How many cameras did you eat? Two. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I want to know how many y'all had on Mario. Would y'all bring out the whole production crew? He had, like, this whole table set up. And you then, weren't here. And then y'all were rude. Y'all set him against this background. All I saw he was whenever he's. If we would have put him on this side. It all I saw was him smiling. That's it. Oh, well, aside from his Hawaiian Mario. shirt. I don't all right, we ready? Reference. Are you calling yes. Mario Hawaiian? Transparent? Hawaiian. He's it is funny Hawaiian. that he did wear a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yeah. I was going to tell you that we had a dress code, but after Mario wore that, he wore a Hawaiian shirt. It didn't matter what you wore. We don't make it a, a, a consistent thing where we, a regular thing where we make fun of our guests after they left. So don't worry about next week. So oh, no, for I'm gonna sure. I'm going to send the guests next week or in two weeks so I get to hear yeah, basically. what you guys say about me. Right. No, you, you're, you actually look normal right now. Um, <laughs> what what Alex says about you. No. You actually look you normal. Are, you guys are going to edit out the party. No. Okay. You look normal. That, it, no, but really Mario <laughs> was wearing the brightest Hawaiian shirt. Didn't somebody else say, like, then, why is he wearing But then he's going to be like, oh, well, you know, Don wore this mustard shirt or something. I don't know. Like, I don't know. He's going to make that something That looks up. good. You look like a cranberry, so what? I don't hear <laughs> it. I know. I don't even like the color red. But anyways, are we recording? <laughs> yes. Because me, me and Don are hungry while we're sitting here smelling a burger and fries. So when when did hockey start? They're, they're in the playoffs. Oh, it starts in that's when it September. started. No, <laughs> when did it originate? <laughs> Late 1800s. It started, it's in the playoffs. Yeah, it's in the playoffs right now. When, when did hockey start? Are you talking about the season? Or right. when did it originate? Yes. <laughs> Any idea? Where did it originate? In Quebec. The UK. Where? Where? In Britain. Hmm. And then it came over to Canada. Quebec, right? They were doing a form. They may not have called it hockey, but in the late 1800s, there was a form of game on ice where they ran around with sticks and were hitting a ball in a, in a basket, I think. So, origins of ice hockey, according to the History Channel, may date to stick and ball games played during the Middle Ages or even ancient Greece and Egypt. 
but that was not on ice. So okay. I was going to say, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear ice. <laughs> yeah, there was no ice. In Balls and sticks on the ground. Until so that's field hockey. That's yeah. field hockey. So, yeah, with that, with that logic, uh, golf also may have started in Egypt right. in ancient right. Greece. Mm -hmm. The term hockey, according to the Canadian Encyclopedia, can be traced to a 1773 uh, 1773rd book published. You're right. You're right, buddy. That was loud. That was loud. I didn't know it was holding up the mouth. You're nervous over here. <laughs> yeah, man. Anyways, the first organized ice hockey game, according to the International Ice Hockey Federation, was played on March 3rd, 1875. I was going to say 73. I was close. Yeah, and where? In Canada? Um, yes. Quebec? I saw another Montreal. article. Montreal. Is it, where are you on? Wikipedia? I'm on the History Channel. The History Channel. Yeah, that's that's just about a little bit more uh, accurate. Well, Wikipedia. So why that. are we talking about uh, hockey? Because I play. Like on well, ice for real, not on PlayStation. We're, we're all trying to figure out who's <laughs> the I. Uh, <laughs> I know that was a, that was that a was great loft, but... <laughs> Well, aside from that, <laughs> how? <laughs> so, Don, yes. thank you for joining us on the show today. I know you, uh, first time guest on the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, thank you for Alex, having me. Thank you for uh, finally inviting him. <laughs> and uh, we've been wanting to get you on for quite some time now, but just Alex has had a, a, a struggle at communicating that. But it's fine. No, we, we ever since him. Cinco de Mayo, since I had my Cinco de Mayo incident where it was, it was claimed to that I drank too much beer, but I had strep throat. Uh, from he had his own sideshow apparently because I don't remember that. Do yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably not even the fifth of May. It was probably like the twentieth of May or something. No, it was Cinco de Mayo. Since we were tomorrow. trying, to <laughs> <laughs> today's the twentieth. Yeah, <laughs> oh, this is the twentieth. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It was since Cinco de Mayo that we were trying to bring him on, but I had strep throat. He was out busy last week, and then um, Jonathan was out last week. So, so here yeah. I am. Yeah. So now we have, we are finally with conversation in, with Don. But Don, we're, that we're trying to get him on. It's been a few weeks. So because the you were supposed to be come on before Mario, but he was we couldn't get you. Yeah, because you're you a publicist. Asked. You're a publicist, and uh, all your people. We had to go through all the red tape it's, that we couldn't get to you. I got a buffer. So yeah, an army of buffer. So how did you get? In, so I know we talked about hockey and all that, but did you grow up in an area mm -hmm. that had a lot of hockey up in the Northeast? Yep, I was born in Philly, and my yep. mom was going to school at the University of Delaware, and uh, I was four. My brother was like seven, and she left. Uh, she would go to school. <clears throat> and when she came, would come home, we would had terrorized the house. Ran one time through the house with a garden hose, spraying my brother. Uh, we would throw odd things like hatchets and frying pans at each other. So she's <laughs> like, clearly they can't stay home unattended. So things have changed. They have a little. Yeah. That was the way he used to That's play. That's the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. Throw hatchets and frying pans. So she took us down to the uh, University of Delaware campus where she was taking night school. And she wanted me to be a figure skater. And so I didn't want to do that. That what? She wanted me to be a figure skater. She put me in figure skating lessons. And I saw... Like, wait, do figure, you know, they don't have that in El Paso. Can you explain what figure skating is? No, I, I definitely know. I, what I'm thinking about the movie... We will have the, a segment oh, on El Paso here. In what, I, I, okay. I'm thinking about the, the figure skating like the that. Will Ferrell. Yeah, Blades. Something Blades or something. Yeah, with Will Blades Ferrell. Blades Fury. Blades yeah, with Blades Will. Glory. They're, yeah. they're too young. Glory. They... they Turn me down or, or just cancel me. <laughs> just, just, we just tried do, that one week, but just, you know better. Just do me all a favor and just cancel me. Because every time I watch the videos, I sound too, like I'm not loud enough. But anyhow, so you, literally you're talking about like Will Ferrell and Blades. Well, of okay, so at this point, I don't know how to skate. We're just walking on ice is all we're doing. But her dream was for me to do that. But uh, her her classes would run over, and so she would be late to come pick me up. And so me and my brother would just wait in the rink, obviously, and then the college team would come on. The University mm -hmm. of Delaware Fighting Blue Hens. It's a scary Blue mascot. what? Blue Hens. Hens. Hen like, like a chicken. Yeah, like chicken, Michael. They're very scary mascots. It's not understanding. Uh, it was not about understanding. It's like understanding why they named their team the Hens. We, you can look we, that up. Let's look up why they named we, it the University we, of Delaware Fighting Blue Hens. Well, we, we discovered that they have a <laughs> hockey team in Connecticut called the Camels. And like that makes sense. Yeah, they have deserts. And well, it originated in Egypt. That's yes. so. 
<laughs> Apparently they were on to something. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I saw the college yeah. team come on. They were like long-haired, toothless guys with whacking the puck around. I went, I want to do that. And my mom's like, no, you're going to be a figure skater. So for a year, I belly ached and cried. And I got my way. So started playing but, hockey. But how much of a carryover do you figure that the uh, figure skating it was helped. helping with? Okay. It really oh, helped because it gave me, uh, in hockey, you learn how to skate on your edges. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've ever seen an ice skate, it's like uh, an eighth of an inch thick steel that will cut. Have you seen somebody get? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very sharp. But you, yeah. most people learn how to play hockey and skate at the same time. But I had about a year of learning how to skate forward, backward, stop, turn. So you were advanced. I was already skating better than all the other players. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I enjoy I enjoy watching hockey, but only for one thing. The fight. The fight. Well, what's, the, what's the old joke they say? Uh, I went to I a went fight, to a and, fight I, and, and a hockey, hockey game broke out. out. Yeah. But you they're heard that? There's the tough. concussion. Everybody's I came worried. up with that. Yeah, they're yeah. trying to limit the fighting. So. But I know that uh, <clears throat> with the fact that you had were, were learning with the the figure skating and especially carrying over into hockey, was there a lot of other people that were doing that or? Mm -hmm. were not, well, not that I know. I think most kids, most normal kids, would start off on the ice with a stick and a puck and just start playing hockey. In fact, I I got into coaching um, probably about twelve years ago. And uh, most of the kids you could tell were just starting because they would lean their ankles in and they're on that inside edge. And so they were. Yeah, that's how, that's how I skate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how to skate. <laughs> I can't skate either. Yeah, My can't wife skate. can. She, yeah. she, but she rollerblades or, or whatever. Okay. And, I can't ice skate. But ice skating, she, we go every year and. It's, I can't do it. I'm, I'm the, the guy with the sled, or my wife's holding my hand. I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm that guy. That's one of the yeah. things that if you don't get taught how to do it by somebody, you'll never learn how to prop like s snow skiing. Yeah. You know, those are things that I don't think if you're because you don't learn how to position your body. Hmm. So I think uh, you can see like when an adult starts learning that they just never get that stride. Down. So you played in high school? Did you play in college? No, I moved down to Houston in my, the middle of high school in the okay. 80s and there was very little hockey at that yeah. time. And so that was pretty much the end in 1981 when we moved here. That was the last time I played hockey. What, what brought you guys down here? My uh, dad worked for an oil company and oil gas. So we were snowbird, Yankee, whatever you want to call us. <laughs> So, so, well, I've known Don for, let's see, I think I met you when I was 16. Or I think God. it's been about six years. Something like seven, that. Seven yeah, years. so I've known Don for like six, at least six or seven years and just heard last week that he plays hockey. Now, I'm not saying we have wow. campfires together every weekend or anything, but I feel like that would have come up at some point. And so as we were discussing Don as a guest, you, know, you as a guest, I'm going okay yeah so what can we talk about you know he's a business owner he's been successful in this area uh you know i've seen it from the general contractor side his work and and his efficiency you know i'd like to talk business with him and uh i forget which one of you said but did y'all know he plays hockey i'm like <laughs> what yeah i didn't I, even oh, know yeah. that i didn't even know that there was hockey in houston until yeah. that conversation so yeah that's crazy is yeah. that would you attribute that to, uh let me reverse that. Would you attribute your ability to stay healthy and active a lot to the hockey? That's part of it, yeah. Um, another big thing was that I, in my 30s, decided to quit drinking. And I was thinking, you know, if I want to live a longer life, I need to get into do some physical activity. Hockey wasn't really on the radar at that point. It was more about just, uh, like, trimming up. Because I, uh, we went to a we went to a, a lake house and we all like posed for this group photo, and I'm like, who's that guy on the end? And they're like, that's you. And I'm like, what? I was <laughs> really pasty white, no definition, big old pot belly. My hair was wet, so I looked bald. And I went, that is not me. <laughs> like that's you. And I went, I gotta get working out. So that's when I, I had always lifted. I remember mm -hmm. as a young kid, my mom bought me a set of weights. And I, I just did curls. So that way I could show the girls. My, and I used to put the... Bicep curls for the girls. Curls for girls. Right. Yep. And I would roll the sleeve up and put that button right there. And then I'd flex and it pew, would pop a button. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I'd be I'm like, I got to lift weights all the time. The girls like it. So that was, that was really the early motivation. Then I got off of doing that. And then I... Um, 
started lifting. I uh, ran into a, a guy that I worked with who went to the same high school, graduated some years after I did, and that dude was in really good shape. So I kind of teamed up with him. He worked out at World's, or it was World's Gym, and then it became Gold's Gym, and then it was 24 Hour. So got into lifting, and then I was eating some burgers and stuff, and I said, you know what, I'm going to start eating boneless, skinless chicken and uh, broccoli and vegetables. So I kind of got on a little bit of a health kick, started learning about BCAAs and Mm -hmm. trying to, uh, you know, get in good shape. And so so you own your own business, and Mm -hmm. you have been doing this for how long? On and off, I was cabling. I did data cabling for about 10 years prior Mm -hmm. to uh, acquiring Telephonics. Um, I... I guess was at about a, a fork in the road, as they say. I was coming up on 50 years old. I had worked for a lot of people, and I was building this guy's business. And my dad said, you care more about the owner's business than he does. And I'm like, God, he's right. I mean, I spent all this time, like, like my heart and soul was trying to build this guy's business, and he's out on Facebook yeah. in the middle of the day. He's going on trips. And I'm like, hey, we got to meet this. Opto- uh, it was an optometry practice. I'm like we got to meet this ophthalmologist. He's like, you handle it, and I'm like, you're the you're the eye doctor. Like, you we're a team. You need to be there. And he just so my dad said it, many years ago that if I found a product or service that I could sell, he said you would be successful. So you know, you if you don't believe in yourself and you can't sell yourself, mm-hmm. and I've always been, you know, I was the one that you guys don't know about these things, but they're called VCRs. You put this big, <laughs> this big black cassette tape in and push I'm, play. Never heard of that, man. I, I wonder. I'm going to look that up. I, I'll probably have to Google that. I've never heard of VCRs. Yeah. Well, I, I never had any in my car either. In your, okay. Yeah, in my car. Yeah. Alex may have really never seen a VCR. <laughs> no, he, he had a VCR in his car connected to his dash oh yeah. no way for yeah this. for the kids so, the back of the little tv so like, no we definitely weren't showing nothing for kid friendly uh we, we had um, the vcr underneath the seat and we would just pop the vcr when i was playing football we would uh I would, instead of going on the bus we would we would travel and i'd pop movies in and then it would come i had them on the dash i had them on the screen i had them on the back of the seats vcr i thought that was the coolest thing and then yeah, when i tried to sell the uh when I tried to sell the car, the guy was like, hey, um, there's a VCR underneath your seat, and we can't get it out because it's it's attached to it. I'm like, yep. yeah, yeah, you don't want that? And they're like, no, <laughs> we do not want a VCR that was screwed into the bottom of the seats, wired into the radio. I just but. showed mine. I've got uh, two daughters and a three-month-old son, mm-hmm. but I just showed my daughters uh, a cassette. A v- like uh, a, a video cassette? Yeah. And it was like my first movie I ever got was The Lion King. And so I opened as brittle and smelled like old VCR, like cassettes. It just was like nostalgic. And they're like, what is this? What Everything's digital for them. Right. Even DVDs were like, yeah, that's like, what do we do with this? You know, whatever. So it's wild. Yeah. But I was the one that, this, uh, the, the reason I brought that up was that it would flash midnight when you plugged it in. And I was the one that would figure out how to go in and program uh, and then anytime somebody got a watch, they couldn't figure out. Give it to Don; he'll figure it out. And I'd be, you know, getting <clears throat> the menus and figuring out how to set the day, date, and time. So, so where did all that come about? I mean, wh- what? How did you? How did you get in that? Yeah, profession? how did you get the interest of doing that? It was really. Uh, I was a young, uh, younger kid. I was in my, I don't know, mid to uh, late twenties, and somebody I knew did it, and. I'd always liked technology, and they're like, well, we run cable. I'm like, run cable for what? Like, for TV? What do you mean? They're like, no, no, in the ceiling. So the guy told me that the owner's going to ask you these certain questions, and here's the answer. So that way you could go in and say you have experience. So I knew the color code for the, oh, it's blue, orange, green, brown. Okay, I know the pairs. That's for the, you know, the Cat5 cable. And when I got into it, I really liked it. And so kind of bounced around a little bit, but I did it on and off, and I always ended up, you know, coming, kind of coming back to it. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't even looking to acquire Telephonics at that time. I was really looking for a supplemental income. I was working with the eye doctor. We're building this business. I really think it's going to be successful, but I'm just not making the money I want to make. So I thought, well, I'm on this health kick. I'm eating good, and I, I'm paying all this money for Smoothie Kings. Well, if I own mm-hmm. one, 
man, I'd get free smoothie with their mice. <laughs> and then I find out you got to have like a half a million to buy into the franchise. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I don't have half that. Half a mil? Yeah, it's, it's high. It's they have one of the highest franchise fees. And yeah, I remember years ago I looked into it. Yeah. Yeah, because you look at it, you're thinking that the, 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 blender and the fruit. overhead, yeah, you yeah. would think that your supplies are not, but it's their franchise fee. Just you're, you're buying the name because the quality, yeah. I mean, yeah, like oh, you yeah, said. Because I've never been to any smoothie place except smoothie king so yeah. the name means a lot that's yeah. right that's all it is is the name there's so. more there's more juice plus people coming out now just because yeah. that's like the market now and with all these yeah. little bakeries or juiceries or yeah. whatever yeah but but yeah back but then. there's the build out too like you guys know being in a yeah. general contractor that was part of it doing a build out was like two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. but you had to show you were liquid and i'm like i don't have that kind of money i have like fifty thousand in an ira but right. i can't touch that for so long yeah, yeah. so i got into or I got on the web and I started looking at my dad's like, do you want to start a business? Because he said, tell me what you're going, how are you going to get customers? And I'm like, I never thought this through. I'm like, I'll just start a business. And I'm like, the people will just come. Like, why? <laughs> Build it and they will come. Yeah. <laughs> how are they know you're there? And I started thinking like, I'll go stand out front, like spin a sign or And I'm Heck like, yeah. I don't know um, how to make people want to come to my, my place, right? right? right. So he's like, rather than start a new business, why don't you think about looking at an existing business? I'm like, that's an idea. So I was looking on this website and came across Telephonics. And it, I didn't know the name because I hadn't signed any NDA yet. But I looked into it and I'm like, there is no way that I could afford this company. No way. And I put it on the back burner. And then I actually put money, earnest money down on a salad extravaganza. It's the same concept as salada. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, man, if I have all this food, you know, free food, I can eat my own healthy food. I don't have to go to the grocery store. <laughs> the deal fell through. The guy didn't prove his earnings. So I went back to Telephonics and I looked at it. And I just started putting the wheels in motion. And I kind of felt like... If it's meant to be, it's going to work out. If it's in God's plan for me, because, you know, I mean, I've got this kind of, you know, group that we, you know, talk about things. And in, in that they say that if it's meant to be or if you, know, you, put, you do the work and you put it in God's hands and then you just. Right. And that's what I did. I put it in God's hands and it worked out. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how. Sometimes I look at it and go, I own a business. Like, <laughs> how that happened, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious, uh, uh, as a business owner also, what was the reason that uh, Telephonics was 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 up for sale? Was it the owner just wanted to get out of it, or how did that come That's about? That's a great question because going back to the other one, uh, that owner of the salad place, he was forty years old, and I'm like, if it's a successful business, why are you selling it? Like, yeah. dude, you got let, like twenty, thirty years of work left because he was retiring. The guy from Telephonics was retiring, mm -hmm. so. I started doing some research, talked to some people. I had a, a guy I know from hockey who used to be um, a CFO for a, a publicly traded company. So he kind of, he was a, a you know, a, an executive with a, a company. It went bankrupt later. It wasn't his fault, but Enron. but he was, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was a, out of Edmonton, Canada. But, publicly traded company. He was like doing Bitcoin back in the day. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was an early crypto guy. <laughs> But now he started, you know, like saying, that's a great reason to acquire a business because they're mm -hmm. getting out for the right reason. They're not bailing yeah. out because the ship is sinking. Right. They're getting out because they've worked hard and they want to try to, you know, monetize or capitalize on that 30 years of building a business. Yeah. So. It's crazy how those, you know, like your dad just kind of questioning your line of thinking because at times it seems like a, such a great idea until someone humbles you and you're like, that's so simple to think of. Like, people why? Just come. Yeah, people just come. Like, like why, why did I think this through? You know, whatever. Yeah. There's a book that I read. It's called E Myth. I don't know if you ever read I've it. I got that. Yeah, it's I a good book. I it talks about it. it talks about three different types of people. You have the technician, the guy who knows how to do make the product. Then you have a manager, the one who runs the people that does the product, right? And then you have the entrepreneur, the guy who dreams. Mm -hmm. And you need all three of those people to be successful, to be successful in a business. Yeah. And so you've got to figure out what, where, where are you? You can dabble in the other guy's role, but to be successful, you need a, a three, need a three people. Yeah, yeah, like that. There you go. And so it's a, it's a great book. My boss gave it to me, and, and we have kind of formulated our, you know, Mako uh, looking at, 
You know, who's who's role? Where who's the dreamers? Who are the managers? Who are the technicians on the product that we're trying to sell? And we've kind of got our teams in in a way where we can see who's who and what's what. So that's been eye opening. But your dad was doing that very same thing without knowing that that that's what he was doing. You know, he was. My dad's been a great influence. Um, Good. Yeah, we we still talk today. He's. Um, like I said, he was the one that pointed out that I cared more about that business than the previous owner. And he yeah. was the one that said, you know, uh, you got to be careful when you get when you acquire or, or start or be uh, or if you are a business owner. And I know you've heard this saying before, but you have to work on your business, not in your business. All right. Because I'm like, as a business owner, I'm thinking if I go out and I pull the cable, I don't have to pay labor. I'm saving the company money. <laughs> well, who's building the business if I'm out right. in the ceiling? Yeah. So he's like, Don, did you buy a job? Did you just acquire a business and you bought a job? And I'm like, Psh, I got hit with a ton of bricks. Like, you know, yeah, Steve who's job- the entrepreneur if you're being the, t- technician, the technician? Exactly. You can't yeah. be both, right? Yeah. And so I started realizing that Steve Jobs and, you know, um, Michael Jenkins. Uh, Dell, Michael <laughs> Jenkins, <laughs> yes, Michael Jenkins, Alex um, Bar- Bar- Barajas. Barajas. I, Barajas. I was going to say Barajas. That. But. <laughs> Alex B. You can call me he Alex B, or you can call ours. me Big. You can call me Big Al. Okay. Oh, there it is, Big Al. Yeah, he, he didn't have enough money to finish it. Yeah. Shut up, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. That's a true story. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I, I started thinking I needed to know how to do everything. I got to terminate the fiber. I got to install the phone systems. I got to do this, and then I realized, wait a minute, like all these other folks that are successful, they have a team of people. That, you know, and I I talked to a guy who owns a business who has just basically has in the last few years turned it over to his son and the company did 60 million last year. So they're no just small little, they're a good sized company. But the guy who started that company said that I've hired people smarter than me to help build my business. Now I'm sure he's a smart guy, but mm-hmm. he's just saying like, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, right? but you gotta be that entrepreneur. You have to, to be the best entrepreneur. You yeah. gotta be the but risk taker. I, I got a question for you, Don. So going into a field, could you honestly say that you had 100% passion for, or was it an interest? And, and if it was more of your interest, like how do you keep yourself motivated if it's not your passion. And the reason why I'm asking this is because, like, for me, I did exactly what you mentioned earlier. I built it, and I was just like, okay, where, where is there, why isn't there a line of people signing up? Right. Because that was my passion. I was like, I want to have a gym. Then I realized, you know, it takes more than that. But when you mentioned the, the Sada place, that seemed like more of a passion because you wanted to eat healthier, you wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. And you go from that to, you know, teletronics, like, so Can what say was that again? It? Telephonics. Telephonics. Did I say teletronics? <laughs> yeah. Teletronics. That 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 originated uh, in Egypt, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> too. Uh, teletronics. Uh, yeah, <laughs> teletronics <probably> was <laughs> a ball in the in Back the early ice hockey in the early seventies. <laughs> in the early seventies, it traveled to Cuba, and then it came over as teletronics. You can look that up on. <laughs> oh, I got it hooked on phone. But uh, so, if, if it wasn't your passion, then how did you <laughs> oh, we do have a hockey team. <laughs> hey, if there's anything to represent El Paso, it's some rhinos because we. Oh, I was about to say something very mean. What are you? T- what are you talking? About? There's I, no I, rhinos I in El Paso. No, you ain't seen my family. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all been <laughs> eating better. <laughs> y'all need to hit up a salada <laughs> smoothie. Cake. There you go. This show is sponsored by Team <laughs> Swole. <laughs> oh, and so, uh, no. you got the shirt. And yeah, I, no problem. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that was, oh, I'm so sorry, familia. Lo siento. Mi oh. corazón. Oh, man. I'm going to say that fits it well. We, we, we're, El Paso is like the number three in the United States of the most obese. I'm not telling lies. Because you imagine whoever brought that team, they're like, what are we going to call these people here? Okay, so this conversation Rhinos. derailed. Oh, yeah. But, anyway, but so, yeah, go back to the, your passion and, your, and, and how I do you always, keep yourself into it? But <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, I always 
had a passion for, I would say passion, but I always was interested See, that's in why technology. I I'm sorry, but look, that's why Michael doesn't need to have the laptop. <laughs> Is Michael doing that? Or yes. Is, is he doing it's, that? No, it's James. Did that, James. Was that Rhino's name Baraha? <laughs> Baraha. 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 Yep. Baraha. Come on down. I see there is no Alex, go sit next no, to the TV. Look at all these Baraha. I mean, those ears are about the same. Anyhow. But, no, I always uh, liked and gravitated toward electronic gadgets. Stereos, oh. TVs. I always liked doing that. I remember... At one point in the 90s, I had a couple roommates. We were avid hockey fans, and I figured out how to put two big TVs next to each other in the living room and had ESPN on one and ESPN2 on the other, and there were hockey playoffs. There's two games going on, but if I had previous channel, they would flip and go to – I offset them, so then I would take oh, wow. what was on the one TV and put it over here. That's just what I like to do. I like to That's cool. So you were like, like that the original geek squad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. That should be like your slogan. The original geek squad. What is your slogan for your company? Do you have one? Uh, I, what was that? Hooked D on I? phonics? No, no. I don't think we have uh, a slogan per I'm se. I'm pretty sure like, it was telephonics unlimited. <laughs> no, it was telephonics uh, for all your cabling needs. Call telephonics. Call telephonics. Oh, wow. Wait, so that's I'm, I'm going to have to wait back up. <laughs> that's Aside from you, I said that's creative. Oh, creative. <laughs> I, I'm not. At what Telephonics or Hooked on Phonics. That's right. Yeah. So what exactly, I think I may have uh, asked you before, but so okay, so asked what exactly now. what it is? Like what is what exactly does your business do? So what we do <laughs> is whenever there's either new offices being built or expansion, or renovations where they'll go above the ceiling and uh, you know t rip everything out. We come in and we literally like pull in data, that's pulling cable. We get on ladders, we have boxes of cable and we just pull thousands of feet of data cable. And those cables go, that right there, are, those are data outlets right there. So there's a cable, there's two cables that go up, they go back to somewhere and connect to a switch, switch. that has the internet that you put into it. So we right. Run so if you go back in that closet, there's a switch. Oh, you'll yeah, see internet boxes. coming into port mm -hmm. 16, and right here, port 16, to my com computer. That's how I'm getting internet. Yeah. So he's right. the one who ran. We well, run the cable. Yeah, they run. You the don't cable see what we. Do. So the trick when we do our business, we take pride in. You don't see what we do when we're done. Even if it's in a warehouse, there's not cable just like strung across the rafters. Mm -hmm. They're tucked in the angle iron. You don't see them, or you put a pipe or you can seal the cable. So like right here, you don't, you don't see what we do, but it works. You plug it in mm -hmm. and it works. And so we also, so we'll do that in new construction or uh, renovations, but now we're moving into doing like new school builds, like a brand new school, like 100,000 or 200,000 foot. Now we haven't, we just got awarded one in Splendora. So we're kind of moving into that. I've hired a chief estimator who used to own his own data cabling company. Mm -hmm. And he has that experience in the relationship. So now all he does literally is work, he works from home, but he just sits in front of specs and plans all day long, reading and looking for these large cabling jobs. Turns around and estimates really fast. Oh, that's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how long have you been doing this? Uh, I acquired the business in November of 2016. So oh wow, seven and a half years. So uh, I eight. mean, obviously, a lot has changed within the in seven years. So. How much does the the change of technology affect what you do or or what oh, you wait, have to do? Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You had just bought the company right before I met you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's crazy. I, I bought I it in November of sixteen, and then April of seventeen, I joined BNI. Yeah, and I met him in BNI yeah. not too long after. Yeah. That. So, in your in your line of years. That's that's because that's what I said. That's a long time, and there's there's so many things that have changed. So, how do you keep up with with the the changes in technology or what's happening I mean, what do you do personally to in order to continue to build your business but also keep up with the latest trends because i'm pretty sure there's trends in every business that of changes yeah well there's publications that come out there's magazines that i read um there's also a, a group called bixie which is like the building industry uh construction just like, i don't know what is bixie don't do me a fair look up b-i-c-s-i -I. so uh, AT&T, or the Bell Company, was Ma Bell prior to 1-1 of 84, right? FCC broke it up as a monopoly. 
which then opened up the door for companies like mine. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, all the cabling was done by AT&T. All the phone, long distance, phone systems, extensions, voicemail, all AT&T or the Bell Company. They have a, a true and absolute monopoly. Building Industry Consulting, Consulting Service, Service International. So this group was founded around 84, 85. It's nonprofit, and it basically talks about, they recognize that AT&T had a certain set of standards in which they would do their cabling. So these folks decided to create a nonprofit to make sure that companies have a standard like the electrical contractors, or so whatever they, you know, yes. they have. NEC. NEC, thank yeah. you. They have a governing body that lays out the rules on the proper and correct way to do it. Now, we just went through all these storms in Houston that a lot of people have lost their electronic devices, and it could be attributed to not properly bonding and grounding those, because what goes through copper? Electrical current. So lightning gets anywhere near, and if this stuff is not grounded properly, it fries it. Mm -hmm. So this uh, agency sets all the standards, and so I have decided to embark on a journey to become an RCDD, which is not a really cool data dude, but it's a registered communication. <laughs> 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 That's, sorry, I had to borrow that. I, I didn't originate that, but it's registered communication distribution designer. And there's only 7,500 in the world. So, oh, that's wow. But I don't know that that could be skewed because I mean there may be like 8,000 people trying to to become one. So it's not like <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. you know. But it's still it's it's considered the pinnacle. So whenever you, you guys were looking at a print, look on the side of the technology. Now we're getting our own uh, technologies uh, on the plans. Before it was all under electrical, right. but you look at the stamp on the side that says Bixie, and it's an RCDD. So we stamp on the, and we're liable because whenever I'm doing a big job in the school and I say, I'm going to, these are my pathways. We're going to map out which way the, the cables are going to run. I have to present it to an RCDD that reviews it and looks at it and says, that's good. And puts a stamp oh, on cool. it. that's uh, cool. So every it's year, then there's, yeah, there's training. There'll be uh, continuing education classes I'll have to take. I'll have to do eight to, I think, eight or 16. I'm, I don't know yet because I haven't achieved it, but. Now, there's so many hours a year you have to do continuing education. So you understand, you saw fiber on there too. It mm -hmm. regulates the fiber optic. It's the transmission of data, essentially, which is all of what we're doing now. So with all that, and you, I can tell just by the way you're describing it, is your interest starting to kind of transition into a passion? I, no, I, I would say it is. It, I am oh. passionate about okay. it. So the one, Good. talking about my dad, the one thing I, my dad instilled in me was, to do whatever you do, if I'm shoveling dirt, I'm going to do it the best I can. I mean, yeah. Just take pride in what you do. That was one thing that my dad really drove home. And he didn't, like, tell me. He just did it. He showed me how to do that. Um, so whatever I do, I, you know, I, I try to be, you know, it's, it's a, what do they call that, a, a double-edged sword mm -hmm. where it's, you know, good and bad, where I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I try to do everything perfect. And you can't achieve perfection all the time, you know. Or so I'm gonna uh, switch gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, you you were in the military, mm -hmm. and um, did you have any um, interaction with technology or what you do today in mm -hmm. the military? Nothing at all. No, it's it's. Um, so I, I was thinking about when I was coming here tonight, the, the, the message, uh, something I wanted to touch on, and that would be, in my family, everybody graduated college but me. And I was trying to fill that role and go to college, just like my mom and my dad and my brother. My dad's a chemical engineer. Oh, my wow. brother had a, uh, a degree in, con back then it was computer science. Mm -hmm. Now it's like he wrote code, he did software, he developed software. And my mom was like a registered dietitian. So. I felt like I had to go to college. Right. I shouldn't have done it. I should have either right away joined the military because I would, I mean, and what I am gonna emphasize, there's nothing to be shamed about taking, you know, a, a profession in the trades, mm -hmm. turn in 100%. a wrench. There's nothing wrong with that. But in my head, I'm coming from that, you know, gener not generation, but that, I guess I was in a preppy high school and everybody was going to college. Oh, I'm going to Baylor. I'm going to UT. And I just felt like I got sucked. I wasn't, I want to say man enough, but I wasn't strong enough to say, you know what, I'm going to go to ITT or I'm going to go learn a trade. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and my advice to anybody, decide, there's nothing wrong with that. I wish I would have made that decision because 
the truth is I went to college and I didn't do well. And so I joined the military because I didn't do well in college. I was like, well, what am I going to do now? Right. So I joined the military and what service? Or what army. Branch? Army. Yeah. And I decided to do that because number one, my mom thought, you know, you can gain some discipline, some maturity. Plus they had the GI bill. You give away so much like a hundred a month for a year, 1200 bucks and you get like 22,000 for college. Mm -hmm. So it's a great entry, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, but I only signed up for two years active. How, and then, you know, but they have this uh, test called the ASVAB. I'm sure you're familiar with it. I tested very well. I could have done any MOS I wanted, but because I only signed up for two years, I had the option of a grunt, 11, 11 bang bang, uh, smoke screen specialist, which I didn't think I could use that after I got out of the army. <laughs> unless, <laughs> maybe, unless, <laughs> maybe paintball, but that's about unless it. Unless I joined a militia group or something. <laughs> Um, or a mechanic. So I, I was a mechanic. I turned wrenches in the Army. So I was a Bradley mechanic. So, okay. yeah. I mean, I looking back on it now, I really, but that's funny you, you, you touched on that because I really, there's a lot of MOSs that would have, like, communications and satellites and things yeah. that I just, had I stayed, if I signed up for three or four years, I would have been, because they're not going to invest that money to sit, because some of those schools are 18 months. Yeah. So what I want to do, basic, and then 18 months, and then they get three months, Send me home. Yeah. Like, they're not going to do it. So, yeah. if I could do it again, I'd sign up for for more. And when I got home, I missed the I missed my guys, man. The troops. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, the, you just it's a bond, you know, that you get to know. I didn't serve in combat, but you still. I mean, you're at any point, you never yeah. know. You they build can, a brotherhood or a, yeah. a, a group like a of fraternity. In, yeah. For sure. Well, and it's a it's a fraternity of people that you know you may die with, so it kind of it adds a different level of bonding there. Yeah. They, they call it trauma bonding now, right? Like yeah. wow. you go through all the crap together, and mm -hmm. just you know something yeah. about it. I, I heard uh, you know Jocko Willink, the mm -hmm. he's a SEAL, but he he runs a podcast. He's a leadership speaker. I think he's done shows with like Dave mm -hmm. Ramsey and those guys okay. on leadership mm -hmm. talks and stuff. But uh, he, I heard a speech he actually gave to a uh, army unit. I think it was a ranger unit, and uh, I think it was pre-deployment. And he's kind of he's kind of talking them through some of the combat experiences that he had. And he goes, "I want you guys to think back to boot camp. What was boot camp? It's like broad question, but what was it? How much do you really learn in boot camp? I mean." The multi velocity of an M16 is 3,200 uh, feet per second. I, I forgot that the day I went home. I can't believe you remember that. But, you know, you learn a bunch of random facts yeah. under a lot of pressure. And the whole point is to see that you can, to prove to yourself that you can perform under an immense amount of stress mm -hmm. and that you can build relationships under an immense amount of stress. And that you take into your career. The knowledge you gain, you're going to yeah. forget most of it. Yep. You know, is anybody like really ready for combat? Just going out of boot camp? No, I mean no. you're not re you're not ever ready for combat, right? And so anyway, he's talking about that, but but the uh, relationships that you build and the confidence it builds in you once you've been through the suck fest and realized, oh, I can still operate even under those conditions, mm -hmm. changes the way you operate when things are going good. Yeah. Um, so do you think any of that? did carry over into it your did. business building? I was just thinking, I remember when we were doing this 15 mile march and we're, we have the rucksack on and we had to put our arms out, put the M16 across uh. and just walk. And when I would, I don't, I would gain strength when I would hear other people, oh, my arms are hurting. It just made me want to just go further. So, and, you know, it made me, I think a stronger person. Yeah. You know, because I'm thinking if somebody's chasing us with a weapon, do you think they give a, a crap about their arms hurting? <laughs> We've been canceled. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I mean, they I've said worse. They don't care. They're like you know, they're they're looking to, to take you out. That's war, right? And yeah. so I would just. I mean, it was like I I would learn how you don't realize how strong mentally. I mean, physical yeah. is one thing, but building that mental strength. You know that you can accomplish those things, and yeah. you know you don't really realize it until you push yourself. Yeah. And well, really, and, and your physical strength is limited by your mental strength. I mean, your body only goes. Oh, as far I can't as your do it. Does. You're telling yourself yeah. you're, that's the mental mm -hmm. coming in saying, "I can't do this." Well, have you tried? Just keep doing it. Well, now you can't. Yeah, because <laughs> you said you can't. <laughs> right. Um, so you were talking about college and and working trades, and you mentioned you know it was a generational thing, and then you said, "Well, maybe it was just my family." I really do think it was an entire generation of people who were told 
that if you don't go to college, then you won't be successful. I mean, 100%. That, yeah. that definitely, uh, I think it's, it's somewhat going away now. But I remember mm-hmm. growing up hearing things like, it's just statistics. If you go to college, you make 30% more. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't mention that they were including the doctors and the lawyers in those figures, right? right. You know, yeah. when you take normal people, normal jobs, you need to choose what you want to do and fulfill the requirements it takes to do that job. If that includes college, if that doesn't include college. And uh, as a as a result of a lot of that, trades are making, have the ability to make a lot of money now, oh, you know, because yeah. so many people left that type of industry. There's industry. not enough. They're saying there's not people to build homes. And so, right. what, yeah. you know, and it's crazy because, uh, I mean, I resonate with uh, so much because, I mean, because uh, how are you done? <laughs> 57. So 57. So you're, you're 10 years older than me, but because I'm going to be 47. But around that same time, yeah, I, I added up because yeah. I, I actually did a calculator first, Michael, because I don't trust my math. But I think it was the same thing. It was either two options. You either go to college or you go to the military. The military. Yep. If you went to a trade school, that means that – that's you where the dumb just, go. Yes. Yeah. That's where the dumbies that, go. That, and, and, you know, and that's crazy how in the last – now in the last 10 years – Man, you, you might just be uh, smarter to go to a trade school, learn uh, AC, like uh, be an electrician, a plumbing. I making ninety thousand dollars a year. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and that, and that's the the thing that I um, I look back at. Obviously, I don't regret going to college, but I think that I would have preferred uh, going into an industry uh, more specific. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, hey, look, you don't have to go to college. You can go to these trade schools. I mean, they've they've become so much more. Uh, popular and and, mm-hmm. and, and well, still. yeah these high school programs are now doing yeah trade they're going to the school or whatever and Auto, it's which like, is awesome you go yeah right mechanics into plumbers like electricians wood shop, i mean all kinds of Man. different things and it's really neat to see yeah. schools really taking a liking to that kind of stuff let Not me share good. this with you so uh, the guy that works i say for me but it works for the company he's been there since 93 and he's alumni of, of humble high school so he invited me the last few years to sponsor a team in the golf. It's Humble High School Alumni Golf Tournament to raise money for seniors at Humble High for sco- uh, scholarships. Mm-hmm. I participate, you know, I, I fund, I, put, I buy a, a sign. Well, I meet the CFO of Humble ISD. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, he says, hey, would you be willing to like help us develop a curriculum for what your business does yes we will we will put a program in place we have a partnership with united airlines we have a partnership with uh, a home builder we have a partnership with um what was the other one? Oh, waste management i mm-hmm. guess you right know here. Yeah. yeah the one right down on yep. is it wilson yep mm-hmm. and i was like yeah i smell it every now and then <laughs> coming out of the gym <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you can you get them to work on that like notarizing <laughs> place <laughs> some febreze but no i was like blown away that this guy would come ask me yeah. to like be a part of what you know i'm like he's That's like awesome. all we want is you just take some interns in and show them you know, That's what smart. you do, give them, and I'm like, he was like, whether or not, and I got to that point where like, now I can give back. Yeah. Whether yeah. that person comes to work for the company or not, it gives yeah. them an entry point to say, hey, yeah. I want to go that direction because of this experience. And I thought yeah. that was so cool. It's amazing to, to, to realize or recognize the connections that you make just by doing selfless acts. Mm-hmm. You know, you did this not because you were trying to get a dime, you did this because you wanted to help seniors graduate, prepare them for their future. Mm-hmm. And so by the willingness of your heart to do that, you are seeing a hundredfold return in opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, That's meeting a, meeting uh, these folks gain. or whatever. And yeah, givers gain, exactly, that mentality. And so when you have people who think that way naturally, it's very easy for that person to be successful because they're not always thinking about themselves. You know, and that, that just speaks yeah. to the kind of person you are as you're thinking about somebody else and by doing that, you see, you, you yourself see the the yield on that return. Yeah, you know, I just got so. God bumps. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. no, no, yeah, that, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, it, it's like they say, uh, you know, some of the best networking happens through philanthropy, mm-hmm. right? You know, yeah. those ideas. You go to some charity events, you know, some big like you find an organization that's doing awesome things, and you go volunteer at that event. You're gonna find so many other business owners and people who have been madly successful and now have the time and the resources to go to pour try. into the community and i'm not saying you should go volunteer so that you can go meet rich people necessarily <laughs> but you you go and you just try to do good things and generally yeah, 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 yeah. you you meet other people trying to do good things and a lot of times those are people who who are disciplined hard-working people yeah. you know because they're now in a position to give back 
Um, I heard a, um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I saw a video the other day. You, you touched on the GI Bill. Um, for those in the military or who have been in the military, um, there was a pre-9-11 GI Bill. Mm-hmm. Montgomery GI Bill, I think. Right, Montgomery GI Bill, which may, uh, you could use, it's now $60,000 of school funding that you can, although school it's costs have a lot more risen. Too, yeah. uh, but $60,000 of funding, and it has several stipulations, but one of them, I believe, is you can't use it after you leave the service. Hmm. Post-9-11 GI Bill now is the only one that you can use when you leave the service. So if you go active, you get that post-9-11 GI Bill. But if you're Reserve, National Guard, any of those, you get the pre-9-11 GI Bill until you deploy. Once you deploy for more than 90 days or something like that, you earn the new GI Bill and you can oh, wow. take it after uh, after your service. Well, then if you don't use it, you can pass it on to your kids or you can let your wife use it or those sorts mm-hmm. of things. The Supreme Court just ruled that the VA has to give you both if you've earned both. Oh, dang. So it no longer gets replaced, yeah. which means... Not, not either or. It's right. So if you're a reservist or a National Guardsman who, by signing the contract, got the old bill, and then you deployed, you now have $120,000 oh, yeah. of school funding. So, you know, you wow. can go get two doctorate degrees or whatever. But just a PSA wow. for all... The <laughs> at for, at uh, yeah. Prairie View... A and M, but you can now go, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, pursue a lot more education. So just a PSA for those for those yeah. who've who've done uh, done their military service, especially those deployed mm-hmm. service members. Are you still? Are your parents still live here? They do. Uh, my mom and dad live on the west side of town still. My mom's kind of uh, you know more or less bedridden. She's mm-hmm. got some health issues. My dad's. More, uh, Having to spend some time taking care of her, but he's 82 on May the 14th. Oh, awesome! Was that f- six days ago? Mm-hmm. He turned 82 years old. He still mm-hmm. drives, and oh wow! Yeah, he ran a marathon when he was 52. Let's go back in '95. He worked at the. He was still at Arco at that time, okay. but uh, you know that did it in for his knees. But uh, so. You know, I mean, I used to, I remember at a young age, my dad jogging and I would run with him. Hmm. Now, not as far, I was young, so I would go like a mile and then a mile back and then I would go the two, he would run about, you know, six to eight miles and I'd try to keep up with him. But uh, but physical activity has always been something that we've done. My mom put me in, in the skating, which turned to hockey, but then she put us in tennis camps. We played baseball. We went snow skiing. I mean, they expose us to a lot of fun physical activities <laughs> and it's unfortunate yeah. my mom's you know, it has ailing health, but, you know, that she's still with us, too. So. Well, a couple months ago, Don texts me and goes, hey, what's that gym you go to in Humble? Is that I'm, team school? You, you, We're yeah. on the same wavelength. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't even remember when I told you what, what gym I go to, but he goes, it's team school, right? And I said, I said, yeah, yeah, that's where I go. He said, when do you go? I told him, you know, morning time. And so, anyway, he said, yeah, I think I'm going to come try it out. So, I give Alex a heads <laughs> up. I go, hey, my, my boy Don is going to come and, and try it out. He should Took be here some, <laughs> some morning this week. <laughs> well, Don wasn't able to make it that week. He came the next week. And Alex is like, bro, this guy just rolled up to the gym on a bicycle. No, no, no. no, no, no the no, first no. time he no, ran. No. <laughs> this guy ran to the gym. <laughs> The, and the, then asked for a ride back. <laughs> no, he off. I was like, I'll run home. I did not. It ask. was late. I was concerned, but the the Tell doors. The, 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 <laughs> hey, the doors were rolled up, and I was like, man, where's this new guy at? I look outside and I go, that cannot be him. There's a dude running. He is He's running. running. So from the the stop sign to the gym, it's not close. And he's just trucking it through the grass, through the parking lot, in some khaki shorts, might I add, with his phone and everything just hanging out. He's like, ah, all right, all right, coach, I'm here. Done. I, I said, up. where did you just run from? He goes, uh, my place of business. Where? And then he mentioned to me, and I was like, are you serious? No, I, I don't. Okay, I don't remember. I think I offered to take you back. I was yeah. like, yo, man, you want to ride back? Because that – that's I mean it's a good little distance. So when he mentions yeah. that hey, you know my family's been active and I, I you proved it. And then to this day you still ride your bike over yeah. here. 
Yeah, the bike's a little bit uh, less uh, painful on the knees and ankles. So yeah, for less sure. impact. But well, I will man. say, Don, a few days after that, we showed up about the same time. Yeah, by Friday morning. And, and my wife had not met you before. And we pull up. And this guy rolls up on a bike, and I almost open my door, and she goes, "Stop! There's a homeless guy." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "That's Don." <laughs> Do I look like a <laughs> Probably because you're you're the only one in this area that would ever on ride a bike, a bike that would ever probably roll homeless. Up in a yeah, because every, every, everybody who's like, riding a bike worked. in this area are definitely He's homeless. homeless. Yeah, it's like he works right, right down the road. He's trying to get exercise. He's Oh, th oh, that's okay. Dawn. I was like, yes, that's From Dawn. <laughs> to, to be on a, to even be on a bike. Michael works. I know. Seven footsteps away from here, Absolutely. and he drives his truck over here. He doesn't even <laughs> run over here. With, so I work right Good here. I walk drive. out the door, get in my car, and drive around to the yeah. other door. That's what I'm saying. So that that's a, that's a testament <laughs> on you, man. That that is crazy. Now, in in all uh, seriousness. It's kind of late, and you're you're on your bike again today. Yeah, I'm riding my bike. <laughs> I'm gonna pack pack the meals. Are gonna go in my backpack, and I'm riding the bike. Home. James you and Michael a, have trucks. You have so. a blinker? <laughs> Probably uh, not. I got a little reflector. And he and he a has bell. a reflective shirt. Ring. Ring. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, if you do need a ride, then, we have two then people with trucks. We can James throw you. will take you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. Yeah. Hey, but watch out! If James is driving you, just put your seatbelt on and hold on. I, I, I'll be okay. I'm only going a mile around the corner. I'm going right down. Only a mile. It's still a good little distance. Alex hates riding with James. No, I'm not. I'm not riding with James. That I don't think. One I think time because he was 45 minutes late, and so I was booking it to try to. Get no, it. he drives like that all the time. So. <laughs> But if you need me, I can follow behind you in my car with Put my blinker lights on. on. Yeah, just to okay. make sure. Well, Ale there. Alex was uh, hit or miss when we started this thing. And so, <laughs> you know, we agree on a time, whatever it was at the time, it was 630 or something. 630 rolls around. James calls and goes, Alex just told me two minutes ago that he his car broke down, so I'm on the way to get him. Like, at 628, he was leaving home at 628? Yeah, just as... We're going to start at 7.30. Somebody says, I want a burger and fries and bails <laughs> 7:30? out. 7.30? <laughs> what? Well, you, since when was our start time 7.30? What time did I tell you? 7.30? 7.30. You, no, you said, telling Dawn 7.30 doesn't make the start time 7.30. It doesn't make the start time to go get a burger and fries. <laughs> I well, got back on time. But then what? he said it was 7.44. Because 7.45 yeah. was too late. Yeah, seven, yeah, the whole 7.44 thing, yeah. Yeah, we're uh, it's, we're it's, it's, it's chaos. But you so also asked you also asked me this morning, <laughs> what time are we starting? We've been doing this for a year <laughs> at seven forty four. Man, hey, tell them that when you start getting older, you start forgetting times and those that, are, man, those, come on, man. More important things. To that's think what. About. Yeah, there's, that's why they're putting us on this side, man. Us 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 younger old folks got to stick together. So I saw a statistic recently that said uh, those. I I think it's linked to BMI. Um, but those who work out regularly or those who are fit on average make like 12% more uh, salary-wise. Mm. And, and we can Google and find the exact statistic, but I think, I think I'm uh, around the ball ballpark. And whether that's just correlation because the types of people who are disciplined enough to keep yeah. themselves in shape are mm. probably the yeah, types of people to make, right? Or if it's actually the uh, 6 to 10%, that's basically 12 um, six plus, <laughs> six, six plus ten is the same as twelve plus four. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I already know I'm not good at math, but godly, I don't know about that one. Godly? I was about to say the other, but I, I remembered I'll get canceled again. <laughs> what? I'm anyway, not, I'm, not allowed, uh, I'm not allowed to curse, Don. So. But I think there's also some research just showing the mental. <laughs> uh, brain hurts. Uh, benefits the uh, productivity benefits to staying in shape even starting your day with with activity mm -hmm. and those sorts of things do do you think work wise you can see a difference in your level of productivity your level of income from that time when you said you had the pot belly and you weren't feeling great about yourself to getting yourself back in shape do you think it trickled over into other aspects of your life i think it, in thinking about it i would say yes because I remember I got in this rut and I was working and I would get home and I'm like, if I wasn't tired, 
I would go work out. I'd go do something physical, but I'm tired. Yeah. So I'm going to go to bed early tonight, and I'm going to get rested. And when I get feeling better, then I'll start going to the gym again. And I never felt better. In fact, I, got, yeah. I felt worse. Yeah. And so when I started lifting again or just doing something physical, it didn't have to be weights. It could be riding a bike, sure. swimming, running. Something active. Yeah. Now I'm burning calories, and guess what? I started sleeping better, and mm-hmm. I wasn't so tired when I got off of work. So right. I had more mental acuity. I slept better. So, you know, that's why the body, mind, and spirit, or body, right. mind, and soul. So, I mean, there's the physical, the emotional. There's all those things that we need to not just focus on just work, you know, because I, I did that. I took a, a chance with my dad back in 20, uh, 2004 to be, you know, self-employed. And all I did was talk to my friends about my business. And I'm not going to say what they told me verbatim, but they said, shut the beep up about that problem, oil gator. And I'm like, it hurt my feelings. And they're like, all you do is talk about, like, you don't, I didn't know the separation of when to shut it off. Yeah. I would talk about it all the time. And so now I, I've learned that then there's got to be something, you know, you do your work. But you got to do physical, you got to do spiritual, all that, that mental health, all that stuff plays into being successful, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So. Alex, what do you think? That's very insightful. That's probably the best thing you've said all day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask him like more questions. Let's elaborate. Please, Alex, expound on that. <laughs> no, what? I can definitely... Uh, say personally the times that I've briefly you know just fallen off of working out you know the uh, work gets too busy lots of long days you don't feel like getting up early in the morning you know whatever it is that those may be sacrifices you have to make for a time but if that goes on long enough you feel the effects in your body and when you feel the effects in your body are you really going to stay that extra hour at work to get what needs to get done done or are you going to procrastinate you know and all the it just starts to trickle into everything else yeah that's a good point and i definitely i see it in my spiritual life too i mean when i don't it sounds funny but when i don't clean out my car my spiritual life suffers does that make sense because my life gets chaotic and it, it i let my guard down on all the little things and you know all the things i shouldn't let come out of my mouth that i start to let come out of my mouth and i realize oh i've let my life get chaotic mm-hmm. you know yeah. uh me and james were talking about it recently mm-hmm. you know when you're working home trades you'll just see a lot of times the the let's say lower income sides of town the not so nice houses are wrecks half the time you know and you just see the chaos people are living in and they just come to accept it and there's no way that doesn't carry over into other aspects of your life versus you see the and it's not it's not 100 percent true all the time but you see the the nicer end of town people take care of their stuff people try to try to stay on top of their game you know they're they're leaving the the house at six o'clock and they're coming back at six o'clock and they're cleaning the house when they get home you know and you just see the difference difference in lifestyle um, and I definitely see that uh, uh, from my perspective so what do you think Alex you didn't respond much earlier yeah hundred percent agree so <laughs> so one thing one thing I do recognize though Don is it sounds like that you had a, a good family home where your, your family was mm-hmm. active and you guys did a lot, they were able to show you a lot of life that got you to thinking about sure. you know your future success. It sounds like your dad was pretty pivotal in helping you make decisions and all that, but not everybody has that. Mm-hmm. Not everybody has a father looking out for their son. Not everybody has parents that's gonna mold them into what they need to be. So what would you say to the person that's in a spot where they don't have those direct that direct contact to their parents but they're at a spot where they just don't know what to do. What do I do with my life? How, where do I go? What do I listen to? What, you know, those sorts of things. Yeah, like, be the dad for a second. Yeah. Wow. Well, so. Yeah. Sorry, I have my watch it. Yeah, that's that's a tough. I don't have kids. I was not blessed or fortunate to have kids. So, um, but I mean, I guess, you know, I, I, well, let me think of the, before I answer. I'll I'll tell you, uh, a good friend of mine uh, found his 15 year old son in his nightstand, some little uh, vapes that he had no idea. So that just broke his heart. And so, you know, he's trying to figure out how do I address it. And one of them had a little like leaf on it with some flowers and stuff. Or, mm-hmm. And so he's, he's, he's devastated. He's like, I don't know what to do. It's my 15 year old kid. And he's gonna add like some cash. 
and you know so he's he's reeling like I don't know what to do in this right. situation but um, all I can do is just try you know and I'm like I don't know how to I'm like how do I Help. Like, give him advice because yeah. I don't I've never had that situation before but you know, I think what's important is that, you know, and I don't know how a child or even a young, like, adult would know a good or bad influence, like, but, you know, trying to get around positive uh, people, you know, whether it's in a church or some sort of organization, to have a mentor. You know, I know they have groups out there, big brother, big sister, things of that nature, but that's, I don't know, man, that's, that you stumped me on that. I'm, I'm not sure how I could. Well, I'm not, I don't want to answer <laughs> for you, but you had... Uh, good advice from your father that that's that advice that you could pass on to somebody else and so if you were to give advice you gave us a nugget earlier which what your dad was like hey if you're gonna you need to go find something whatever you do if it's picking up trash or if it's shoveling yeah. dirt do the best job you can yeah. do be the best version of of that profession that you could be mm-hmm. you know and so it sounds like your dad kind of instilled that hard work ethics or or the ability to, to keep a focus and 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 keep the goal and the ahead of you and to work towards that goal you've obviously taken over you purchased a company you yeah, know and yeah. and and it's it's surreal that, that that's a possibility for you and but people shaped your thought process that was your parents you know and and that's some of those things that we could teach other generations no, no matter if a young guy comes in your life now you could still be the role model father figure or whatever they're not going to call you dad but they could be someone they look yeah. up to you have a lot of wisdom uh, sure. a, a lot of history, a lot of background, and those things help us help other people, you know, by sharing them our successes and even our failures because we all grew from our failures too. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, this wasn't. I didn't just like walk into this. I have a no, lot yeah. of no, yeah. a lot of you know. I don't want to say skeletons, but I had some history that I had to you know like overcome some some trials and tribulations. You know, yeah. so you know there was a time. I'll be honest. There was a time I thought, man, I don't even think I'm going to be able to buy a new car. You know, and then mm-hmm. when I bought a house. And I would back in the driveway, and I'd be like, that's my house. Like, mm-hmm. I bought a house. Yeah. And then a business. It's just like, you know, and, and I do give, you know, uh, a lot of that um, credit toward my higher power. You know, I mean, without a higher power in my life. Because, you know, I when I tried to run the show my way, I just run it right into a ditch. Yeah. You know, when I tried to, because I was self-seeking, I was manipulative. Mm-hmm. I'm not proud of these characteristics, but that was the truth. Mm-hmm. If I saw somebody that was hanging around a, a bunch of cute ladies that had money. I wanted to be that guy's friend. I didn't know the guy, I didn't care about him, but that's an ulterior motive that yeah, I'm right. not, I don't do that today. I don't look at somebody and say, well, they got a deep pocketbook, I wanna be their friend. Yeah. Self-seeking, and, and so, you know, when I can, you know, look at what can I bring to a situation rather than take, like if I, where can I help a situation out? Because it does, it comes back around. You know, when I, when I help somebody else, I don't know when or, or why or how, but somehow I get a blessing in my life. Like, I'm a blessing to somebody, but then it comes around and it's like, you know, and it's not always, you know, peaches and cream and things yeah. are great. But, you know, I mean, I think we need to have those, like, fall down and, and you know, scuff our knee and bump our face on the air or get hit and, you know, grow from that, you know, because, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people, I think they, they, they have some difficulty and then they just think, well, forget it. I wasn't, you know, I'm just, I'm giving up. Yeah. You know, they give up a little, you know, and just keep trying, you know. I mean, I don't know. And it sounds like you had some resilience, too. You got back yeah. up and got back in the saddle. And you may have fell down again, but you got right back up. And mm-hmm. that's just, again, another testament to your, your character, you know, who you are as an individual. It just it's not going to define who you are. You'll right. define who you are by making good decisions over long periods of time, yeah. you know. And then that's why you can look back now and say, well, I've – because I chose this path, following a higher power, believing in God, changing my mindset, not making it about self, but making it about other people, you find success in that. You find blessing in that. And you've been blessed by those things. Yeah. And so sure. uh, we appreciate your time. And you guys got anything else? Yeah, I've, I have. So I have uh, one question and then I'll, I'll expound on the question. Okay. Uh, but did you grow up with uh, God in your family? Did your fa- were you, Did you come from believers or... So to follow up on that question, then what led you to believe and what led you to want to uh, pursue to make application to your life? Mm -hmm. I mean, you talked about the time when you said, I need to stop drinking or I need to stop being this person that I've been. I need to stop with the manipulation. I need to, you know, Mm -hmm. stop being self-seeking. What 
what changed that perspective for you? Well, to, to go back, the reason, that, you know, my mom grew up in a Catholic school. So the nuns in the 50s mm. were not very pleasant. So <laughs> she kind of rebelled against the religion, and she came. So we grew up watching Carl Sagan, which I don't mm-hmm. know if you, you guys have heard of him, but he used to do PBS programs mm. that would talk about cosmos. Mm-hmm. And it was all the Big Bang, and there's nothing out there. And, you, you know, and I just kind of look at, like, this earth is in this rotation around this hot rock that it's like we're at the right temperature and we can exist. And I don't know, it, it's it's not just by chance. I don't think that this is, boom, all of a sudden these things happen. Something more powerful, more divine. And I don't know what it is. So I don't read the Bible, but, you know, my mom, she's atheist. It's just point blank. She's like, when we die, we go right into the ground. And I see her today, you know, you know, expand. She's really unhappy. She's a miserable person. And I'm like, do I want to follow in her footsteps? But I now see that, you know, and you, you touched on it, that, you know, there's uh, alcoholism that runs in my family. And so I ended up getting sober. it will be 23 years this December. So 22 wow. years ago, uh, or 23 years ago in December, I stopped drinking. I was 35. I had nothing. I mean, I really was starting all over. Um, and that program talks about a higher power, that if you keep living the way you're living, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. And for some people and a lot of people, it's jails, institutions, or death. Those are the options you have if, you're, if you suffer from addiction. And, you know, I know like every day people are dying of, of alcoholism and drug you, the homeless guy on the bike. <laughs> a lot of it has to probably do with they don't want to yeah. they, they're so used to living that way you know um, and they don't want to conform they don't want to get a job they just want to do what they want to do when they want to do it and you know I, I felt like I have I have a lot more that I want to accomplish in life based on what you said about my you know my dad and my, our family and you know we come from like very very humble beginnings I mean my my mother's father didn't graduate high school he worked on the docks of Philadelphia grandmother dropped out in ninth grade to become you know basically a housewife or you know and so you know my dad's family did a little better but you know my dad was the first one on both sides to graduate high school i'm sorry high school college college no, right. then he went on to get his master's in business and then he worked for one of the major oil companies and so i mm. see that and i think that's the recipe for success go to school get your degree mm-hmm. and go work in you know a fortune 500 company but you know back to your question i think it took me a while to really kind of like melt away the ice of a higher power because of my upbringing. My mother was very, you know, open in saying that, you know, if you want to go to church, I'm not going to prevent you. I'm not going to punish you and say you can't go to church. But what 10-year-old is going to, oh, okay, I'm going to ride the bike down the church and go. Yeah, let me sit somewhere still for yeah. two hours and listen to people talk. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't, you know, so my grandmother was a devout Irish Catholic. And so she really was a firm believer. And so she really was disappointed that her, her daughter strayed so far. And just, you know, so she was always anxious that I would, you know, find some sort of higher power. And, um, and so when I came into, be, you know, getting sober, came into the program, I, you know, they talked about this higher power. And I'm like, well, I guess this isn't going to work for me. And I just shut it down right away. Um, but I stuck around for a while. And then you know, you get what's called a sponsor that works with you. And this guy says, okay, I don't ask you to believe, but do you believe that I believe? Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can do Why would I not do that? And as I've stuck around want more time, I start seeing things working in that are just not man-made. You know, people getting getting well, people that were like coming from nothing, getting sober and, and relying on a higher power and, and working with other people, you know, it's just to see that sparkle in that person's eye that was like destitute for death, because that's where a lot of people end up is they, or they, you know, they commit crime and they go away for years and you don't ever see or hear from them again. And so to be able to come back from the depths of hell, and that's really where you end up, you know, and so today I don't really try to dive deep into what is a higher power. I just know it's not me and it's not like we didn't construct this universe that we're in we didn't develop water and food and we like just the thought of eating food and our body can turn it into energy if you really stop and think about that that's amazing right yeah Mm -hmm. um and so i just know that uh you know when i 
turn by thoughts and actions. Like, you know, if you have problems, put your problems on the table. Everybody drop your problems on the table. It's a tangible thing. And I look at yours and I look at his and I look at everybody else and I'm like, I don't want yours. I'll take mine back. Mm -hmm. When you learn how to deal with those, you know, by turning your thoughts and actions to somebody else. I've done it for 20 years. I go help somebody else and all the problems that I think I have, they just kind of work themselves out. Like all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're gone. And I'm thinking, what was I fretting over? Having a conversation with an employee about money. It's going to be tense. But I just stop and I say a prayer. I get power from, you know, within. And in, in this program I'm in, we tell our story. Like, you know, it's a, you talk about your, you know, your trials and your tribulations and how you've done it and how a higher power works in your life. And I got up to the podium and I'm in a room full of a bunch of people. And I'm nervous and I'm like, oh my God, there's all these people. What am I going to, and I say a prayer. And next thing you know, 45 minutes went by and they're all coming up to me. And I'm just like, my higher power spoke through me. It wasn't me, because I didn't know what to say, but I said what I needed to say, and people were just amazed, and I was like, again, I just got God bumps, mm -hmm. but it's amazing. So mm -hmm. there's gotta be something, but like, really? Yeah. There's something that's more powerful than man, come on. I mean, so. Did you ever go back and uh, become a sponsor or anything like oh, that? Oh yeah, yeah, I've got a guy I work with now, and he's the one that has the kid that found that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That bill, you know, stuff in his, so. And I'm trying to advise him, and, and so. Oh, I that said, makes that story hit harder too yeah yeah so you know he came to me and said look you know i've got what do i do and i said you know what i think what you could do is is maybe just ask him to sit down and ask him is there anything that he wants to discuss what's on his his brain we want to talk to you about something but we're going to give you a chance yeah to go first and yeah. he's like my wife said the same thing <laughs> my wife, Two for two. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you get. Maybe it's a higher power. <laughs> it's, coming, it's coming from a higher power speaking from us. So, yeah. yeah. So, like I say, I, I I, mean, I don't, the beauty is I don't have to understand it. Could you, can anybody yeah. truly understand a, the no. divine power? I don't no. have to understand it. It just no. works. So, works for me. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. That was cool. Very good. Well, we appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, man, would you ever time. would you ever welcome or would you ever uh, entertain coming back on the show again? Uh, oh, yeah. Follow up. This is oh yeah, I'd love to. Great. Yeah, I can give you a little check. All right, next week. <laughs> <laughs> give me a little time to do some things first. Seven forty four. Yeah, at seven forty four. On what uh, what and, coast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alex. And next time, John, we'll bring burgers. Alex no, we Stanley. appreciate you. Thank you, Don, yeah. for, for coming. We'd like yeah. to have you back on the show again. Man. So yeah. Appreciate it. That was, from, it was good. That was from cool. all of us here at Apex, thank you for listening. We'll catch you guys next time.